injection using anatomic surface landmarks. The intraarticular hip injection is a frequently used technique for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Many thanks to the authors, Masoud and said. This video was created based on the findings from the article cited below. Intraarticular hip injection using anatomical surface markers. Arthroscopy techniques, volume 2, number 2, May 2013. PPE 147E149 Introduction Intraarticular injection of the hip joint has been frequently used as a therapeutic and diagnostic tool. Injections of corticosteroid or hyaluronic acid have been used in osteoarthritis of the hip to delay total hip replacement. More recently, injections have been used as a diagnostic test to prove the presence of intraarticular hip pathology with a specificity and positive predictive value of up to 100%. This has proved very useful in establishing the diagnosis in a group of patients with vague complaints involving what is collectively called the hip region, which includes the groin, buttock, upper lateral thigh, greater trochanteric area, and the iliac crest with minimal positive findings on physical examination and radiography. Traditionally, intraarticular hip injections are performed under fluoroscopic or ultrasonographic guidance. The purpose of this article is to describe an injection technique that depends on relative distances from anatomic surface landmarks that can markedly reduce or abolish the need for imaging guidance and is suitable for routine use in the outpatient clinic. Injection Technique the aim is to pierce the hip capsule at any point on the anterolateral surface of the femoral head or neck below the acetabular rim down to the intertrochanteric line. The patient lies supine with the limb in neutral rotation, patella facing forward. The tip of the greater trochanter is identified and marked, the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS, is marked, and a line is drawn between them, at the junction between the upper third and lower two thirds, lying at the soft spot, one can feel the anterior border of the gluteus medius, this is marked as point A, needle entry point. Two lines are then drawn, line one from the acis distally toward the upper pole of the patella and line two perpendicular to it from the tip of the greater trochanter anteriorly. The intersection point is point B, target point, figure. The tip of the greater trochanter is identified and marked, the anterior superior iliac spine, ASIS, is marked, and a line is drawn between them, at the junction between the upper third and lower two thirds, lying at the soft spot, one can feel the anterior border of the gluteus medius, this is marked as point A, needle entry point. Two lines are then drawn, Line 1 from the acis distally toward the upper pole of the patella and line 2 perpendicular to it from the tip of the greater trochanter anteriorly. The intersection point is point B, target point figure. The groin area is sterilized and draped, and by use of aseptic techniques, 3 milliliters of local anesthetic is injected at point A, to minimize the pain of inserting a spinal needle. Then, an 18 to 20 gauge spinal needle was used and inserted at point A, directed toward point B with a posterior tilt of 30 degrees. Without image control, the needle is inserted until it touches bone. If it does not touch bone, the needle is reinserted with a lesser angle to the floor along the same craniocaudal direction until the bone is encountered. Fig 2. The beveled needle is rotated while in place to allow freer flow of the injected fluid or slightly withdrawn if resistance continues. As a diagnostic test, 10 ml of lidocaine, 1%, mixed with 5 to 10 cc of normal saline solution was injected. Another practical technique. According to Singh Jagwant et al. Many thanks to the authors, Singh Jagwant et al. This video was created based on the findings from the article cited below. Singh, Jagwant et al. Do we need radiological guidance for intraarticular hip injections? The Open Orthopedics Journal. 2014 May 16 semicolon 8 to 114 to 7. A 22 gauge spinal needle is inserted approximately 2.5 to 3.5 cm lateral to the intersection of the femoral artery and the inguinal ligament. The needle was directed posteromedially at an angle of 20 degrees until the bone was reached as shown in figure. 
An X-ray image intensifier was used to confirm the position of the needle and injection of a radio-opaque contrast, OmniPak 250, as shown in figure. Fluoroscopic image showing needle placement and intraarticular contrast uptake. Fluoroscopic image showing needle placement and intraarticular contrast uptake. Thanks for watching my video. Do not forget to subscribe my non-profit YouTube channel.